Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and happy Friday everyone. <laughs> okay so I actually haven't filmed in a while. I mean my my videos have been going up consistently. I have just been in Missouri with my mom and my family um, for the Labor Day weekend. I'm also out of breath. Why am I out of breath? <laughs> Anyway, I just got back into town. Uh, my family came back on Labor Day um, so they could all be at work and school, but I just flew back um, yesterday. So I drove there, flew back home. Anyway, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. If I sound tired, it's because I am <laughs> very tired. <laughs> and then I'm going to turn around and drive back um, a week from Sunday um, and be there for four nights, five days, four nights, and then I'll drive home. Um, anyway. Such is the, the whirlwind that is my season of life right now. Okay, but today, today's plan was to talk through my capsule wardrobe plans for fall. However, um, I love to follow um, the Everyday Styles uh, capsule guides as like my own little framework for my wardrobe. And that doesn't come out until next week, till the 15th. Um, which I was expecting it to come out this week, but it's, you know, that was just my brain, like when past ones have come out type thing. Um, I don't have any advance notice on that. Um, anyway, it comes out next week. So I thought what I would do, because my plan going forward, and we're talking about sewing economically all this month, is to build up my um, basics, you know, my TNT patterns, those are the ones that we can hack really easily um, and get a whole bunch of different variations off of just one pattern. And I talked about kind of what kicked off this whole sewing economically series was um, buying, you know, shopping fabric sales smart. Um, and one of the things I was really banging on about was, number one, having a color palette, whether you've had that done professionally or it's something you've put together for yourself, knowing your neutrals um, and knowing maybe like your signature color and buying some, especially some solids and some different um, textures and, and types of weaves and all that kind of stuff um, to help you better build out your basics so then you can add in the fun little pieces, which honestly the fall capsule is going to be adding in, in theory, and I think it will be because I have a, I mean my wardrobe is looking really well, really good, so it'll probably just a few like fun pieces that I'm going to be adding in for the fall, but I thought I would do like a, um, you know, this is going to be my fall capsule wardrobe, my basics that I'll be making, and then, and this actually kind of goes into winter too because, you know, with the basics you can easily go from one to the other, and then uh, next week I will post my um, kind of fun things. <laughs> my <laughs> my extras uh, for my fall capsule wardrobe once the um, guide has come out and I've kind of settled on. So that'll be like some more patterns and stuff like that. So we're going to be talking about shopping our stashes and when we have things in our stash that we have, you know, shopped sales smart, um, that sort of thing, how easy it is to shop. So everything I'm showing you today is stuff that I've pulled from my stash. Now some of this is are things that I pulled from that Minerva sale that was the end of July, I think, um, that sparked the whole video that then sparked this month of economic sewing. But that was the whole point of shopping that sale and putting some things into my stash that I knew were going to become some of my basics. Um, I'm not, I mean, I'm still got, I'll still have some gaps in my basics uh, for my checklist. And if I'll talk a little bit more about what I'm talking about with my checklist here in a second. But um, for the most part, this is getting me through you know, building that up so that I can just add in some fun pieces and I'll be set and ready to go for the fall. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to talk about today's um, Love Notions Feature Friday because I am over on the Love Notions channel today. I will link that video down in the description box if you're interested. And I am talking about the Harmony Blouse. So that is today's Feature Friday pattern. That means it's $5 today only. You can use Tomcat Kit 10 to get you an additional 10% off. And um, I am showing, I'm doing a one pattern three ways over there with the Harmony. So I've made the Harmony, um, two, of the, two of the three are just versions that are with the pattern. I've just made them in uh, different fabrics. So one's in a viscose chalet, the other in a print, and the other is a solid um, silk and I uh, did different sleeve variations on that. But in the video, I'm showing you those three things, but I'm also showing you how I did a dress hack, dress hack into the Harmony. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it a lot. 
Um, so I'm excited. So if you're interested in that, definitely go have a look over there. And I'm also showing you how to do a full bicep adjustment on a short sleeve or a cap sleeve. It's a little different and actually much easier. I mean, it's easier than doing like a full bicep adjustment on a long sleeve. Um, because where the, you know, the hem of that, those sleeves hit is right where you need the fullness. So it's kind of just a, an easy slash and spread, but I'm showing that as well in that video. So definitely it goes hand in hand with our sewing economically for this month, but definitely go over and have a look because um, it's just a great way if you have the pattern already, or um, if it's not one, I mean, it's one of my TNTs and we're going to be talking about that here in a second, but um, it's a great one to hack as well. And hacking it into a dress, like a trapeze style, loose fitting dress, woven dress, so easy. So um, anyway, I'm showing you how to do that over there on that channel. So go have a look again, $5 today only Tomcat 10 gets you an additional 10% off. So you can get the pattern for like $4.50. It's a steal. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to um, first share that because it's kind of, it goes hand in hand with what we're talking about here. And in my opinion, it was a fun video to film. And um, I think that there's some stuff over there a lot of you are really going to like. So go ahead over there. Okay, let's talk about basics. If you are a newsletter, newsletter subscriber, you're actually able to watch this on Thursday evening. Um, I, just as a reminder, my newsletter goes out every other week. So it doesn't go out every Thursday, it goes out every other Thursday. But on the Thursdays it does go out, you get early access to Friday's video. And this week I have included my fall um, capsule wardrobe checklist. Um, it's, I mean, it's basically the same thing as the summer one. I just have a different title on it, but you can go in and um, I think if you've got uh, the Adobe where you can edit things, you can go into Adobe, you can download it into um, Canva if you wanted to and play around with, you know, doing things digitally, adding text boxes so you can fill it in digitally and filling in your colors digitally. Um, just kind of whatever you want to do or old school, just color it in and write down what you would like to add to your wardrobe. I'll be showing you my checklist a little bit more next week when I go through the actual specifics, but um, I am using this color palette. <laughs> so um, the Everyday Style did release their color palette. It is not this. It is different. I think it's black and black and white, and then there's like a burgundy color, and then there is a dark green, kind of a pale pink, and then kind of a, a camel color. So I've gone similar to that, but changed it up for my own color palette. So I've gone with the ivory, the dark blue, um, kind of the warm navy that is my color, um, which is one of my neutrals, my signature red, um, slash bright orange, the kind of my warm red and bright orange. They're kind of, I intermix those a lot. Um, and then I've gone with olive green, which is a great green for me. And then I've done kind of a salmony pink color. And then I've done my really warm camel almost goes rust. Um, some of my camel colors will go more ochre, like a warm gold yellow color, but I also have um, some warm camels that go almost rust orange, and um, yeah, I've got some things, mostly for winter, that I really want to do with that. So my winter palette probably won't change much. You know, maybe, maybe the olive and the salmon color will change, uh, but for the most part, <laughs> the rest of them are all my basic uh, colors. So. If you sign up for the newsletter, again, you got the fall um, checklist that came out um, to your, on Thursday night, so you should have it already. However, because I'm sp splitting this video up into two separate videos, I'm also going to put it into the next newsletter. So in two weeks, um, it's going to go into that newsletter as well. So if you have not signed up for the newsletter and not gotten that yet, definitely um, there's a link down below on how to do that. Um, and if you're new to the newsletter, you're also going to get the wardrobe basics checklist as well as the fabric buying guide just for free. It's just in my newsletter, <laughs> but um, you will, when that newsletter, when you sign up, you get the wardrobe basics checklist and the fabric buying guide. Then when the next newsletter comes out, you will have a link there for the um, fall capsule checklist again. So that's going to go into two newsletters. So um, anyway, so if you've missed it this round, go sign up and you can get it in two weeks in the next round. <laughs> uh, but today we're gonna talk about more about my wardrobe basics checklist and how I am going to be using that with my fall wardrobe. All right, so 
I'm just gonna go through this list of fabrics. I'll kind of tell you how long they've been in my stash and uh, we'll just kind of go from there. So the first thing I'm gonna make is a Concord. So this was in my summer. Um, this is a little purple for my blue really, but I think it's fine. Um, I have a purple kind of this color in my, on my color chart anyway. Um, but I've been meaning to make myself a scoop neck short sleeve Concord for my summer wardrobe and it didn't happen. Oh, speaking of which, this is my Adrian. You guys haven't seen this yet. This is my Friday Pattern Company Adrian where I use the um, eyelet knit from Minerva sleeves. This is in my plans for summer and I, I have a, I'm going to do a video, it probably won't come out until October because I'm talking about you know, doing the whole sewing economically thing. Um, I don't know, this doesn't really fit with that, but I am going to do a video early in October where I'm just going to show you my summer makes that you just hadn't seen yet, just because there hadn't been a chance to stick my own little lookbook in there of things that I made for summer. I didn't get everything made, but I got a lot of it made. Um, and this is one of them. This is so fun. I did a full bust adjustment on the front piece and um, yeah, these sleeves are a lot of fun. So they're the eyelet. The sleeves, it might be kind of hard to see, but again, I'll talk about that more probably in October. But my Concord never got made up. So short sleeved Concord. Now I know we're going into fall, but fall can still be a little, you know, we can still have some warm days here in Indiana and um, it'll be great for layering. So, um, and I need it in my wardrobe anyway, uh, just for, you know, we're going to Disney in October and, um, you know, just to have it even again when the weather gets warm again. This is, you know, kind of one of my neutrals, kind of. <laughs> Um, it's not as navy as I was thinking. This happens sometimes, but it's still in my color chart. It's just one of my more, one of my kind of purples that are in my color chart. Um, so it'll be fine. Anyway, short sleeved, Concord, cashmere Concord. And then I'm also going to do, um, make myself while I have the fabric out, a, um, tank, the Summer Basics tank by Love Notions. It's just a very easy uh, pattern and I use it, it's just a knit tank top and it's great for layering pieces as well and I think that could come in handy even as the weather gets cooler and I'm wanting to layer things up. So that's what this is going to be um, and I think that's about as much yardage as I, I think I have a, well uh, this is meters because it was from Minerva so maybe I think I have a meter and a half. I don't think I have two. If I have two No, I was going to say, if I have two, I may try and squeeze a long sleeve shirt and a short sleeve shirt out of this, but I don't, I don't really need a long sleeve shirt in this because I've got a long sleeve navy blue v-neck shirt, t-shirt that's still fine. So I don't know. It'll definitely be a short sleeve scoop neck. We'll see what we have if it's a tank or something else. Okay. Um, so that's it for knit tees for right now and tanks. Um, woven t-shirts. So I did make myself a cream silk harmony, um, which technically my woven t-shirt TNT pattern is the cashmere at Montrose. Um, and the harmony is my, from Love Notions, is my woven tank pattern. But, um, I mean, sleeves come with, you can do a sleeved version of the harmony. And so I kind of mix and match those a little bit. They're both on there. They're both great patterns. I can hack both of them. So, you know, I'm a little loose. I mean, your TNT is your TNT. <laughs> And TNT, I'm, I'm talking about tried and true patterns. Sorry, I get that question every single time. I just assume people have heard that um, that acronym before and not everyone has. So a TNT is a tried and true pattern. These are patterns that I know fit me well. They're usually a, a pretty basic pattern that then you can change up a lot with pat, uh, fabrics, patterns, or patterns. <laughs> and then also they're very, um, because they're a basic pattern, very easy to hack into different sleeves, necklines, all that sort of stuff, which we're going to talk a little bit more about that at the end of this video too. So I am going to do, so I've got my cream one that's going to maybe think worn a ton this um, fall, but this fabric um, is the rayon crepe that I got from the Minerva sale. It's, I think it is called navy, light navy maybe, but it's definitely more blue than black. I mean, that's a little brighter than on the camera than it is in person, but it's definitely uh, a dark, more of a dark blue. So this is a rayon crepe. I'm going to be doing a long sleeved Montrose cashmere at Montrose t-shirt in this one. Now the Montrose doesn't come with a long sleeve. It comes with a, um, throw my white balance off. My lights have gone all nutty. <laughs> um, it comes with like an elbow length sleeve. I think that's it. But cashmere at club, um, the Alton that they released, both of their sleeve patterns, um, sleeve options on that pattern can go onto the Montrose. And one of those is just like a, a bishop sleeve. Um, it kind of, it gathers into, I don't know if it's elastic it gathers into, or maybe it's a, a, like a bias, a piece of bias, but it's a fuller sleeve that gets gathered down into the cuff. Um, 
and then it has that beautiful pleated sleeve. But I think for this one, I want this to be simple, one that I can easily wear underneath things. I'm just gonna do the Alton sleeve that's the longer sleeve with um, the um, gathers into the cuff. However, saying that, I could also see me just going ahead and making the Montrose as is with just the elbow length sleeve. Um, just because you know it's gonna be layered under stuff and that might be easier and less fussy to get in and out of like jackets and coats and stuff. So we'll see what, if I end up sticking with the regular Montrose or doing the Alton, but yeah. I think I have a meter and a half of this, but I did buy this with the intention during that sale, uh, which is where my basics checklist comes in handy because I knew what items I still needed to add to my closet and uh, made shopping that sale really easy. So then you're getting the sale prices for the high quality fabric, but you're not having to pay full price for it. And then you're not losing your head and buying all of the pretty fabric, which is so tempting when there are good sales. <laughs> and I'm speaking from experience because I struggle with this as well. I'm also a recovering uh, fabric buying addict. Am I really recovering? Um, <laughs> hopefully. Um, okay, um, I do have some woven tanks that I still don't have added to my um, wardrobe yet, but I think I'm gonna wait. I think I'm gonna wait and see. I do have fabrics in my stash that can be used that have been in there for like a long time, um, but with the woven tanks, I may just wait. I mean, that might be something nice to add in the winter because they're all silks actually that I've just, I've. Um, either purchased a while ago um, or I got from my uh, mentor Joyce's stash when I inherited a lot of her pieces uh, but they're just solid colors so I'm gonna wait on those for right now uh, but the next one are turtlenecks I do I did want to add two turtlenecks to my wardrobe because I'm gonna be using these as layering pieces you guys have seen both of these fabrics um, I like the itch to stitch Hepburn turtleneck and these are cotton jersey pointel so they've got like a little it's actually easier to see probably in this one it's the same fabric, just different colors. You can see that little kind of slight pattern on there, the little holes in it. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and make these turtlenecks up because, I mean, they'll make up really quickly. And um, I still need to wash all this. <laughs> it's just been in a pile. So I've got my ivory and then I've got, this is like a burnt orange color. I think it's called brick, um, but it's, you know, it's similar to my oranges that I can wear so I'm using it as like a red slash orange um, and then my ivory to make for layering purposes this fall and winter those will definitely get worn as the winter goes also I'm going to be making myself just a plain knocking my highly technical list I literally I have a um cork board in my sewing room and I just printed this off and it gets put right with the um push pin there into the cork board so I can e easily access it. But the other thing that I wanted to make is my uh, just a regular navy sweatshirt. So in my head, I will be wearing this as an athletic sweatshirt, but also as a like a sweater. Um, so I made the Stanton, I know, I know the Stanton, I just love it so much. This is the fabric I'm using. So this, um, I made the Stanton in a print. It's like a dark green, um, kind of got swooshes, uh, splotches on it last fall with some See You at Six fabric, but instead of doing a hood, or now they have the stand-up um, collar on there, I decided to um, just do a neckband. So I, you know, calculated that up, which basically I measured, I made the sweatshirt up, measured the neckline, and then cut a band two inches wide by 85% um, of that circumference that I measured of the neckline, I made it that long. I like my neck bands to be about 15% smaller than the neckline. I think it, then it stretches in really nicely and lays nice and flat. So I had purchased this, oh gosh, bamboo cotton sweatshirt fleece from Blackbird Fabrics last winter. Like they had their Boxing Day sale maybe. And I had grabbed um, this because they had matching ribbing. And it's like, as you can see, it is a navy, but it's kind of, it's more of a dark blue type of navy, which those warmer navies are really, are good for me, um, the darker blue. So um, I got, oh, I don't even know how much I bought. One and a half, two meters um, from Blackbird, that with the matching ribbing. So, um, and again, it's a bamboo blend, which would be kind of nice. But in my head, I've envisioned this being sweat sweatshirt slash sweater. So wearing maybe some collared shirts underneath it. Um, maybe even a turtleneck. That's kind of came back a little bit. You're wearing turtlenecks under your sweatshirts? I don't know. Am I that cool? Am I cool enough to do that? I don't know. Well, <laughs> 
to think about that a little bit. But yeah, I envision myself wearing this as like a nicer sweatshirt, like a sweater as well as kind of a sporty sweatshirt. So another Stanton, just with the regular neckband, but I have the ribbing, matching ribbing and um, sweatshirting there. And again, that came from Blackbird during their Boxing Day sale last winter. Okay, next, we're gonna talk about bottoms. Okay, so another thing that we are going to talk um, during this month is mending, mending and altering. Um, you know, I like to thrift things, and if I can squeeze it in, my friend Jenny and I were thinking about doing another thrifting video, and it, this may get pushed to October, um, but we would like to do a thrifting video where we take you guys along with us, and we'll show you the actual process of us in the shop, how we thrift, um, and that sort of thing. So I think thrifting is a great way, number one, to get fabric, you know, to make something out of it, or for upcycling purposes, or just to wear as it as is, to give a second life, you know, get off that hamster wheel of fast fashion, fast fashion, and um, just be more sustainable. I love thrifting. I love, especially when you can find some really cool vintage pieces that are still in pretty good condition that have been in like someone's, you know, cedar closet for years. That's always fun. Um, but one of the things that I do want to talk about, um, as much as I I know I'm not alone in this, how much I hate altering things and especially things that I've made, and then I discover, oh, I really don't, you know, I could make that better, but then I don't because I hate altering. But I'm gonna, we're gonna hold each other accountable at some point this month, and we are all going to, <laughs> golly, excuse me, we are all gonna pull out a couple of things that we are not wearing, and the reason why we aren't wearing it is because it needs a little bit of a tweak. And one of those things for me are, um, and I actually am wearing them, but my sister was making fun of me when I had them on last. So I'm gonna alter them because it's a really easy fix. But my resolution joggers that I made in the um, almost like legging material, it's actually the same material as this fabric here, which is a, oh, what's the acronym? It's like a ATY something like that, from Surge Fabrics, and it's um, basically like a generic form of Suplex, which is a athletic knit. Um, it's just a really sucky in type of fabric. It's very similar to like a Lululemon leggings, like that kind of uh, stuff. So very, you know, the high-end $100 leggings. Um, it's very similar to that. But I made myself a pair of navy. Love those joggers back in the spring. But my sister's like, they're just a little too long. She's like, you just have a lot hanging over the cuff. And I was looking at him and I'm like, ugh, she's right, which is so annoying, <laughs> so annoying. I don't need to take them up a lot, but they have a cuff on the bottom. That's why it's annoying. If it was a normal hem, it would not be an, as annoying, but I'm gonna have to cut the cuff off and then reattach it. Is it that big of a deal? No, it actually really isn't. It's not gonna take me. It'll probably take me longer to make sure if there's not, what color thread? Yeah, I have white thread on my serger. It will take me longer to put the navy thread on the serger than it's gonna take me to actually do the alteration, but, that's beside the point. <laughs> we all just want to complain. So that is one thing that I'm going to be altering. My friend Jenny has a t-shirt that needs to be altered that she bought a size too big, and she has a pair of pants she needs to take in. So I thought we would just do kind of an talking about alterations a little bit in one of the um, videos and how we can extend the life of uh, things in our closet just by some small tweaks. So that being said, I'm going to tweak those resolution joggers, but I'm also gonna make myself a pair of resolution joggers, and that's a Love Notions pattern, in this beautiful camel color. It's like a burnt orange. It's coming across more orange on here than it does in real life. It's definitely more of a camel in real life, uh, but it's a camel that goes like rusty colored, you know, um, which is one of my colors. So this is gonna be a pair of resolution joggers that'll be great for my walks and then just for athleisure in general. I just prefer the jogger silhouette on me so much more than a legging. Um, I do wear some leggings, um, you know, for athletic occasionally, um, but I just really like that jogger look. I think it balances my body out well. So I'm going to be making another pair of those. And I bought that at Surge Fabrics. Um, it's been a, gosh, it's been a while. Um, last year, maybe the, maybe like a year ago in the spring. Um, I just never got around to making, I think I was going to make leggings out of them. And then I made the, some of the leggings in the fall or the spring and decided, uh, I think I want to go more the jogger route. And then I just didn't get around to making those in joggers. So that's been in my stash for a while. Again, I bought it because I knew my color palette and I knew I wanted some athletic bottoms um, in that color. So it just works out so well. 
Okay, the other thing I would really like to add to my fall wardrobe is a jean skirt, and I really wanna do, my weight is all over the place right now, which is understandable. I have a lot going on um, in my personal life, with my mom, um, and all that, but I still wanna look put together, and um, I want to make, um, you know, but my weight is fluctuating rapidly. I mean, not rapidly. I'm up, woo, 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 doing that, yo-yoing, is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, I'm actually getting ready to go on an eating plan just so I have a plan so that I am being as healthy as possible so that I don't get run down and get sick myself. So I'm, I've started an eating plan to helpfully, oh, keep everything on the up and up and keep my immune system at top notch through all of this. But I have this um, denim, and I think I got this at the fab, uh, fabric.com like a really long time ago, like maybe two years ago now. And I bought it with the intention of making myself and my daughter some skinny jeans. And then again, I was like kind of falling out of love of skinny jeans. And my daughter's kind of fallen out of love with skinny jeans at the moment. I mean, they're still classic. I, I'm not saying that skinny jeans are out. I know that's a big debate right now. Definitely. If skinny jeans are great for your body shape, they are 100% in the classic realm now. You can definitely wear them. I'm just on my personal body and really in, am enjoying um, a little looser leg right now. So anyway, but I purchased a lot of this. This is the Robert Kaufman. It's not the super stretch denim because that he doesn't have that anymore, but it's like what replaced the super stretch denim. So it's got some really good stretch in it and I'm gonna make the Itch to Stitch Quebec skirt. Now I made that when it was released and um, I don't know that it'll come back for my fall wardrobe, but probably my winter wardrobe. It's just very warm. I made it in a faux stretch suede and it's in a camel color. It's really beautiful. And I love that skirt, but I really want a denim one, um, just so I can have a denim skirt in my wardrobe. Um, you know, one that hits like right above my knee or right in the middle of my knee. I just think it'd be really, yeah. I think that would be really cute with tennis shoes. I could wear it with boots a little bit later on. It's kind of a straighter skirt, but it's a pull-on skirt. So it's kind of the skirt um, sister to the Mountain View pull-on jeans from Mitch and Stitch. Anyway, it's a great pattern. Um, and I want to do just a traditional looking denim skirt with this fabric. So again, that's been in my stash for a long time. Um, and I have a lot of it. So that could be something else as well. But for now, that's what that's going to be. And then finally, for right now, um, the last thing, two things that I really wanna make for the fall um, as part of my basics are I wanna do a three quarter length um, Pattern Emporium Wanderlust dress. I thought about doing another title, um, Love Notions title, uh, and I, I might, but I really want this to be a very simple dress. The title has princess seams down the front, which are beautiful. I mean, the shaping on them are beautiful, but I just wanted something very simple, like less seams. So I'm going to be doing, and I love, I love both of the patterns, um, but I'm going to do the Wanderlust from Pattern Emporium in this Ponte from Minerva. I bought this during the sale with the intent of making a midi length, three quarter length sleeve, or like a T length. It's really kind of a T length. Um, you guys have seen like my periwinkle and white striped dress. It's that pattern. Um, so that's the mid scoop neck. I think there's a higher one, but I really like that scoop neck. I also have one that is kind of like autumnal colors that will totally be pulled out for fall, but it's the lowest scoop neck. And while I love it, it's a, I mean, it's very scoop neck. <laughs> Sometimes I feel a little like, hey, um, <laughs> Not hard to do when you're busty, um, but I think I want to do that mid scoop with this one and do a three quarter length sleeve so that I can just wear this layered on, you know, with things over it, cardigans, jackets, all sorts of stuff. Um, it could be worn for the holidays. It could be worn just a ton, casually dressed up. Um, but I'm going to make that the Pattern Emporium Wanderlust dress, three quarter length sleeve. And also out of this fabric, I'm going to make myself another Love Notions Metro Blazer. The same as the cream one that I made back in the spring. I've worn that one a ton. It's actually going into my fall wardrobe as well, but I wanted one in a fun pop of color. So I'm going to do that same straw collar, basically the same thing as the cream one, but just in this red. So I'm excited about my knit blazer. So there you have it. And I have a lot of this fabric. I think I got four meters of it. There's a lot. <laughs> a lot sitting here. And I don't think I've washed this one yet either. No, I've not. The tag's still on. So, got a lot of laundry to do too. 
But there you have it. Those are the basics that I'm going to be adding to my wardrobe this fall. I'll be adding some more basics probably in the winter. I actually have, um, well, actually I have two fabrics coming from Minerva um, in exchange because I'm part of their ambassador program. So I do make things every now and again with um, a piece of their fabric and then post on their site. And um, yeah, it's just a relationship that I have with them, as do quite a few other seamstresses. But um, I have a beautiful wool that's coming that I'm going to make myself my more formal um, wool coat. I was going to make one in navy, but this is in a um, kind of, a, it's a camel color, but my camel color that goes just a little rust, so it has like orange undertones, because <laughs> this is, it's so funny how your mind works when it finds like inspiration. There, here in the U.S. and maybe other places of the world, there is a cap, I think it's Capital One, commercial. And it has uh, Dan Levy, the actor that was in Schitt's Creek with his father. Eugene Levy is his dad. Anyway, he's an actor and he's in these Capital One commercials. And I mean, whatever. It's He's like standing there talking and whatever, the commercial. But <laughs> he's wearing, <laughs> he's very fashionable. In the commercial, he's wearing like a really warm or bright orange button-up shirt with a navy sweater over it. And then he has on this real warm camel coat. So it's like the bright orangey red with the navy and then the camel over it. I mean, it's, you know, throw in some cream in there and those are like my four neutrals. Well, my three neutrals plus my signature color, like all together. And then he just has that on with jeans and like some tennis shoes. And um, I mean, I realize he's a man, but it's a very classic look. And the color combination was just so stunning. And I have my bright orange button up, uh, silk shirt that I made that simplicity 1538 that I made um, in this uh, silk crepe de chine that I love and I mean I'm gonna be making my navy sweatshirt that I could wear over that or I also have um, more of a real thin sweater that I've got that's in navy although it's looking a little well loved at the moment but or I could wear that over it and then with this coat over it with some jeans and tennis shoes I just, that color combination just really struck me for some reason. So I'm very excited about that. Although that may be more like winter sewing, but two other things. And now these I did buy, I'm sitting on them this fall because I did my ready to wear looks and you know, fabric to use to like recreate them. And there were a couple that I fell in love with. So one of them is, um, one of them I already had fabric for, and it was, I think it was a loft dress and it had like this army or olive green utility jacket, like a really like kind of a cropped real kind of loose, like it was in a tinsel twill type fabric over it. And I already had the fabric that I had picked for the dress and I've made the dress. You guys haven't seen it yet, but I really wanted to recreate the jacket too. Cause I think the olive green will be great for my wardrobe because olive green is in my fall, um, the color palette that I'll be using. And, um, and it's also just a good neutral for me. I've used this fabric before and this is the one that I uh, paired with the the, that video, but it's a tinsel twill and the olive from Style Maker Fabrics, and I am going to make that Avril jacket from Fiber Mood. Um, I just bought it and printed it out, so um, I am going to be recreating that outfit, which hopefully I can get. Um, I have three Sew the Look videos. I had fabric for two of the looks, and then I had to buy this just to finish the one look, and then I bought for the third one, just one fabric for another piece and I can finish the rest of that look as well. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that doing some sew the looks and then us talking about how we can recreate, not that any of the looks I picked were like high end designer, like there are more affordable brands, but I wanna talk about we're gonna talk about price. And sometimes the things I make are more expensive than how I can buy them. But we're also gonna talk about the unseen costs and why, in my opinion, I think that sewing is still the better option for those types of things, um, if you've got the skill set and the time. So yeah, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about that too with the Sew the Look. So this was, I grabbed this so that I can complete that Sew the Look. And then I also, from Style Maker, grabbed this fabric that I had picked for, um, there was an outfit that had the, um, this goes well with my, <laughs> with my, um, fall sewing as well. But I had picked, it was like a slip skirt with like a turtleneck and then a jean jacket over it was the look. And I'm gonna be making a turtleneck um, in my Hepburn with the Pontel and I already had the jean jacket. So I thought the slip skirt would be fun to add to my fall wardrobe. So this is a print, you know, this is going off a little bit. But 
that's going to be the other sew the look that I'm making. And then I'm going to recreate the Seychelles, or the, there was like a, a salmon top that was being worn with cream colored jeans. I'm recreating that one too, but I already had the fabric and the jeans for that look. So three sew the look videos that are coming up. I love doing those. Those are so much fun. It's been a while since I've done that. I would also like to say, this is a very long video. I'd also like to say, I realize, so I'm doing a lot of basics and we're talking about the economies of sewing this month and how it can be um, a sustainable hobby and great for the environment if done correctly. Um, you know, and all those wonderful things and how I think sewing can still save you money um, in those areas of life. But I would also like to say, sewing's an interesting hobby because it is very functional um, you know, we're making things to cover our bodies. It's something that, um, yeah, I mean, you have to have things that are on your body. So it's a, a, where, a functional art form is what it is. But I also want to say that sewing for me, and I know for a lot of you, is also a creative outlet. And it is absolutely 100% okay to buy that beautiful print that you love and make a party dress or recreate some dress or um, you know recreate something that's in your brain just because just because you see it and you want to create it that creation in and of itself is not wasteful um, that would be like telling an artist that they are you know you know why would you create you know this piece of beautiful artwork you know what function does it have um, you know, it doesn't not, art does not have to have a function per se. You know, the function of art is to bring about emotion and beauty and wonder, and it keeps this world beautiful and, um, people uplifted and it's great for mental health. So I just want to say it is okay. And I'm giving you permission to go out and make the completely useless, non-functioning, beautiful dress just because you have it in your head and you want to get it out there. Um, that's okay to do. And, um, and I encourage that as well. So we're also just, you know, kind of talking about the ways it can be functional and how we can save some money as well, but that it's also okay to just do the creative thing because that's what your brain needs and what your mental health needs. So just wanted to put that out there too. Sewing needs to be fun and it needs to be creative and feed our souls just as much as it can be functional. And that is the beauty of sewing. It can be both things. Okay, that's all. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> okay, Sunday, I have got another pattern hack, and, God, this video is gonna be long, uh, another pattern hack, and I'm doing, I'm still going through the um, Head of the Curve Cashmere at book. Again, these hacks work for any pattern. This time, we're gonna be doing a woven dress, and I'm gonna be showing you how to change the neckline on it. So that's gonna be the hack that we're, oh no, sorry. That's a lie, that's in a week. This week is the knit dress that is in the book, the fox hill, and I'm showing you how to hack the sleeves. So the dress in the book comes with a short sleeved knit sleeve. We are going to be making it long and making it into a balloon sleeve with a cuff. So I'm going to show you how to do all of those hacks um, to make it a little, I mean it can be a fall appropriate dress with a short sleeve because it's very easy to layer things over it, but we're going to do a fun sleeve as well so you've got more options. Again, this works on any kind of fitted knit sleeve on a dress or a top or whatever. So the hack works for all of that. And then the following week, I'm doing the woven dress pattern, which is the honey, honey born, and um, I'm gonna be doing a neckline hack. And then the final week, I'm doing the pants that are in the book. They are a taper leg pant, and we're gonna be making them wide leg. So those are the hacks I have planned for um, this month, and that's kind of the order we're gonna be going in. Um, I also, Quite a few of you pointed out that the cat, the patterns that are in that book, there is on page seven, right hand side, column, bottom, instructions for how to download digital copies of all the patterns so you don't have to trace them off. <laughs> so I uh, immediately am printing off the last two patterns of the book because I did trace, well, last three patterns of the book. The Stan, uh, Stanwick, Stan, no, what's it called? The Raglan t-shirt pattern that's in there. I can't remember what. Stanway. The Stanway t-shirt pattern that's in there. Um, I'm not doing any hacks on that one just because there were only four weeks in September. Um, but I did have the last. I traced off the first two that I did. Um, but the last three I had printed off. I'm like, God, it's so much easier. <laughs> I hate tracing. Um, but anyway, I'm having so much fun with the hacks. And a lot of people have done, had put in a lot of requests for some different hacks to do. And so I'm kind of thinking, what would you guys think if I just continued Sundays 
for an indeterminate amount of time, maybe to the end of the year even, and just doing pattern hacking and how to make the most out of the patterns that we already have. And we can do a whole bunch of different variations of hacks on not just these patterns from the book, but on um, other patterns as well, just some good basic patterns, ones that would translate well to, whole, to many, you know, different, you know, like a woven tank top pattern is kind of the same across a lot of different ones or you know whatever the pattern might be a fit and flare dress whatever um yeah if you guys would like to see that let me know because we can definitely continue the pattern hacking on um until we run out of ideas so yeah let me know if that's something you'd like to see all right tuesday what is tuesday's video I'm not sure what tuesday's video is going to be yet but i am hopeful that next Friday will be the conclusion of my fall sewing plan. So we'll talk about the fun pattern things that I'm going to be making and we'll do just kind of a this is my fall capsule, um, you know, the things I'm pulling from my closet, the, you know, the fun things, plus the basics that I'm, you know, working on to add uh, to my wardrobe as well. So kind of a wrap up of those I think is going to be next Friday. And I'm not sure, it, Tuesday's either gonna be a sew the look maybe, or maybe we'll talk alterations, or what else? Or we're gonna be talking about pattern and fabric organization and how that can make us be smarter with how we spend our money with sewing as well. That may be it as well. So I have like a few different ideas. I'm just not sure what it's gonna be yet. But make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will be quiet now because this is a very long video. <laughs> Okay, hope you guys have a wonderful Friday. Again, make sure you sign up for the newsletter so if you didn't get the fall capsule checklist, you can get it in two weeks. Um, that's all I have for today, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Get in some sewing, and I will see you next time. Bye!